Hello, my YouTube friends and family. So I was just coming on to say, hey, how's everybody doing out there? See if you guys are all still alive from this uh, coronavirus. <laughs> what are you guys up to? What are you guys, you know, are you guys kind of sheltering in place or are you just kind of ops normal or, you know, let me know in the comments what you guys are doing because we're just, um, you know, you guys probably all have social media. So obviously it's like, what's the deal with it? There's people that are like, oh, it's no different than the flu. And then other people are like, you know, it's going to end humanity. So it's like one end of the spectrum to the other. But I mean, I guess the numbers don't lie, though. It really has spread fast. And um, as of right now, every state in the country has cases of the coronavirus, except for West Virginia. So um, we are the Watson family. Joe is currently um, teleworking, which has, has actually been kind of nice. So he's able to log in here at home and work and get his work done. Um, and of course, we homeschool Parker. So there's really no change there. School is it's normal for me and little P and Lexi's school has been canceled for two weeks as of right now. So, um, you know, we're just kind of, I, I wouldn't say we're sheltering in place, but we definitely are being very mindful of not going out if we don't have to and only going out for the things that are essential. Um, and just kind of enjoying this time at home, you know, it's, it's beautiful today. It's like the first day that we've uh, had 80 degree weather. So first day of spring, we get 80 degree weather. So I'm not going to complain about that. But, you know, the coronavirus, it's really messing up my jam. <laughs> and I mean, seriously, you guys, I don't want to like, uh, lighten something that is very serious. I know there's been a lot of um, people affected by it and we've had a lot of people die. So I'm, I'm not minimizing that, but as you all can probably relate, it's put a strain on a lot of things. And, you know, one of them is our adoption of Jackson. So we've been working on that for some time now. And since my last update with you guys, we've been working on a spring break visit, trying to have Jackson come here to Virginia um, to stay in the house with us and actually get to spend spring break here. And we were so excited about that because when we met Jackson, um, we only got to spend the weekend with him and it was just for a couple hours each day. It was supervised. So it was a great visit, but there wasn't any of that like real um, deep connection and time to really see how him and Parker interacted. Um, he didn't get to meet Lexi on that visit. And I just thought, wow, to have him here with us in our home for a week would be awesome because we would really get to see how he how he is with our family and how he is in our home and how he likes it. Um, so we were super excited about that. And then because of his caseworker's schedule, um, we were driving, we were going to drive halfway and she was going to drive him halfway. And we were meeting in a midway point um, to get him. And because of her vacation schedule, she was actually not going to be able to come get him right away. So they decided to let Jackson stay with us for two weeks for spring break. So when we got that news, I was like, you know, she asked in a way almost to make it sound like she was wondering if we would be okay with Jackson being here for two weeks versus one. And I was like, are you asking us? Like Jackson could, we're trying to adopt him. <laughs> I'm like, we'll keep him however long you need us to, you know? So, so, um, we were supposed to pick up Jackson on April 1st. And now with this whole coronavirus crap going on, I was like, afraid that it was going to affect our visit, but then I hadn't heard anything from them. Uh, so I thought, well, maybe no news is good news. But then I started thinking and I'm like, wait a minute, they're like super disorganized already. They have been the whole time that we've been dealing with them. Communication has not been the best. Um, so I should probably reach out and make sure that the visit is still on because here we are, you know, two weeks until we're supposed to go pick them up. And I sent an email and just said, Hey, you know, is, um, has Jackson's school been canceled too? Like a lot of the schools around the country have been canceled. Um, and if it has been canceled, is there any reason why we couldn't just pick him up early and do our visit now versus waiting for April 1st? Um, you know, because there's talk about maybe a nationwide shutdown and all this stuff and just really trying to get that visit in before 
you know, crap really hits a fan, I guess. And she immediately responded and basically said she's not allowed to have any face-to-face -face contact with the kids until further notice and that that state's um, the state where Jackson lives is tightening their visitation policy with the virus, and so the visit is not going to be possible at this time and basically until further notice. And it's like, you know, disappointing. Parker is crushed. Like, the boy already had, like, Jackson's bed made for him. Like, he was just so excited about the visit with Jackson and um, having a brother for two weeks is how he put it and getting to wake up with him there and go to bed with him there. And, um, oh, it just broke my heart to have to tell Parker that Jackson's not coming. So I am not an unreasonable person. I understand them not wanting Jackson to come because of the virus. You know, safety of all of us is paramount. Um, above our desire to get to see him. What I was most frustrated about though was um, were you ever going to tell us that the visit was canceled or were we just supposed to kind of like read your mind? Like I don't really know because I'm not like a really good mind reader. So um, I took a second to gather my thoughts because I didn't want to respond in haste. Um, but I just was very blunt because I do need them to know like yo um, that's pretty inconsiderate because like we were scheduled to do this. My husband's already taken leave in order to drive up and, and get him and then to drive him back. And so I just told her, you know, I get it. We support that decision, you know, with this virus going on. Um, but we're just wondering when were you guys going to tell us this? Or were you ever going to tell us this? Or were you going to wait until we were like three hours in on this six hour drive to come get Jackson before you said, Hey, um, put the brakes on. Cause we're not allowing visits anymore. I mean, come on. And I told her just a little bit of consideration, uh, for our family time and our family schedule, you know, would just be nice. I mean, so that was just frustrating and she never responded to that email basically. Um, obviously they've known about this for a while. I know that things are hectic, um, for everybody right now with the virus. But um, when you have something that important on the calendar that's affecting families and people taking time off work and driving six hours to meet you to come get this little boy, um, to me, that warrants at least an email. I mean, something. So who knows, you guys? If I hadn't emailed them yesterday to see if we could do an earlier visit, I don't know if they ever would have said anything because it just, that's how the process has been with these people. Just, I just feel like there's just no consideration um, and terrible communication. So anyway, the visit with Jackson is off and therefore pushing our potential adoption of Jackson back even further because they've let us know that they have no intention basically of placing him with us until we can have um, at least this visit with him because it was such a lengthy visit um, and our adoption worker was going to come to the house and visit us in Jackson while he was here to kind of assess the visit and how things were going. Um, so we were pretty confident that after this visit, they were going to start the actual process of getting him placed with us. But now that's being pushed off because who knows when the visit's going to take place now? You know what I mean? Like the virus is like everything is so uncertain right now. So if it's a month, two months, three months down the road before they even let them come spend a visit with us, then that just pushes the adoption off even more. So very discouraging and disappointing. But what can you do? So um, anyway, I, you know, Lexi's potentially going to be affected. She's got her, this is her senior year. She graduates this year. She's got her prom coming up in May, just a month and a half from now. And she decided that she wanted to get her dress made for prom. And me, I'm just like, dang, girl, why can't you just go buy a dress at the store? We could be so complicated. Like, it's just drama. Um, last year, she tried to buy a dress online for prom, and I agreed to pay for half of it. And then the dress came, and they jacked it all up, and it didn't fit her right. And I was like, that's why I told you. Like, don't buy stuff online like that. If it's that important for a, an event like that, you should – you should go and actually try the dress on. Nope, she didn't want to hear me because I don't know anything and she knows everything. And they wouldn't. They would only refund half of our money when I called and complained about the terrible job they did on the dress. And I'm like, well, that's my half because I paid a hundred and she paid a hundred. So you're the one that wanted to buy a dress online. I'm taking my hundred bucks back. 
So this year, her senior prom, she decided that she wanted to have her dress made. <sighs> My girl, you are not Beyonce, okay? You are not, you're not going out to like, you know, uh, a concert. You're not, <laughs> I'm like, really? Okay, fine, fine. We'll have your dress made. You know, it's her special day. I love my girl and I want her to feel beautiful. And she's only gonna go to prom once, right? So I agreed to take her to, um, it's a bridal shop. And the dress was $570 and I told Lexi that we would pay for half of it. She's paying for the other half. So we put the deposit down, um, $235 and the dress was supposed to be done April 25th because prom is like the first week of May. And I just got a phone call today from the lady, um, basically saying that she's calling all of her clients to see if we would either like to cancel the order and have her issue a refund of our money, which was the $235, or um, have her continue with the order and making the dress, knowing that she could not make the April 25th deadline now because she's decided to take the government's recommendation of closing for two weeks. Um, it's not mandated. It's as of right now, it's not mandated closures. It's, it's recommendations and she's chosen to take that recommendation. Okay, fine. So I call Lexi and ask her, you know, what do you want to do? Do you, it's not going to be done on time. So you're only, if she gets the dress done at all, your only hope is that they're going to postpone prom because of this virus. Um, because if they don't and prom is at the same time, the same day, then your dress is not going to be done on time. She's telling us that she cannot have it done by April 25th. Um, so Lexi's like, mom, just cancel it. Just call her and tell her just to give us our money back. She's like, I don't want to risk it and then lose, you know, almost $600 for nothing. And I'll probably never wear that dress anywhere else. She's like, just cancel it. So I call the lady back, you know, within an hour of her calling me. And I said, Hey, you know, we're going to go ahead and cancel the order. Um, just let me know what I need to do to process, you know, to get that refund. And then she proceeds to tell me, like, apparently she's changed her mind since she spoke to me an hour ago and said, oh, we're not issuing refunds, but um, what we can do is give you a store credit and you have to use that credit within a year. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me, let me make sure I understand you right. Because you just told me that I could get a refund like an hour ago. And I told you I was going to call my daughter and I was going to call you back. And then somehow that's changed. And she's like loses her marbles on me and starts yelling at me and says, oh, I already spent the $235 on the material for the dress, so I cannot give you a refund, um, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, first of all, this is not a mandatory closure, okay? You're choosing to close your shop for two weeks. Um, you're a seamstress. She's like, it's like a mom and pop shop. It's like her with her little Mary Poppins assistant, um, so I don't understand why you can't lock your doors and still continue to work on these dresses for your clients. I, I personally don't understand that. I, I don't own a seamstress business. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Okay, fine. Um, but you're choosing to close. So we have a contract. You made me sign a contract. Um, and in that contract, it said that you would have this dress done by April 25th. And now you're calling me and telling me that, um, in my opinion, not due to the virus, don't say this is circumstances beyond my control, you're choosing to close your shop um, for two weeks and not continue working on these dresses for your clients. So you're the one breaching the contract, not me. So fine, I get it, fine, but give me my money back. And she's yelling at me. And at one point I'm like, why are you yelling? You're yelling so loud, I can't even understand what you're saying. So let's let's not be five, let's be adults and calm, calm down. <laughs> So, um, I'm like, you know, okay, fine. You know what? You said you already spent the money, my $235 on the materials. So you won't give me my money back. Then I want my dang materials. I want my sequences and I want my lace and all the stuff that she bought for Lexi. I want it because I paid for it. I mean, Judge Judy would agree with me. You don't get to keep my money and keep the material when you're the one breaching the contract and not completing the dress when you said you would complete the dress, you call me, your customer, and give me the option to cancel for a refund, that's that's on you, that's not on me. So, you guys, I cannot. She finally says, give me your email address. I'm gonna send you an email. 
and it's gonna say that I'm willing to give you a, a refund of the $235 um, on April 25th. I'm like, why would you wait till April 25th? It's like March 20th, that's a month away. You just called me and made me make a decision today on whether we wanted to cancel or continue the order, but then you're telling me you're, you're not gonna give me my money back until the end of April. So she really loses her cookies and she starts screaming at me and says, I don't have the money right now. I don't have the money to give it back to you right now. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Fine. I realize everybody, these businesses, I, I'm not unrealistic, you guys. I get it. Like these businesses, especially these small businesses are really being hit hard. You don't have the money right now. I'm not hurting for the $235. Fine. I need the email though so that I have proof that you're agreeing that when you have that money in April, you will pay that $235 back to me, or you're gonna give me my sequences, all of them. One of the two, you can't keep them both. Because you guys think about it. Think of how many of her customers don't push back. How many of them don't fight back? How many of them just go, oh wow, okay, you don't offer refunds and I have to just do a store credit? Okay, that's fine. How many of them do you really think is gonna come back within a year and do and get a dress within that year? I don't have anything I'm going to within the next year that's gonna require me to have a formal dress. So no, I don't want a dang store credit. So she's essentially keeping all this money from all these people that put these deposits down on these dresses. And this was just a prom dress. She's a bridal shop. So you guys know darn good and well with wedding dresses how expensive these can get and she requires half down okay so she's keeping their money and or and keeping their materials that they paid for um which I don't even think she's really ordered the materials I think that's a lie because she said once she orders the materials for the dress she sends pictures and an email to us so that we can see the type of sequences um the lace basically what it looks like. And we have to email her back approving that we like that material. We agree with it. Yes, proceed with making the dress. We have never yet to receive that email from her yet that she's ordered any of the materials for it. Anyway, so I'm like, fine, send me an email. And if I don't have the email by tomorrow, I'm going to call Miss Ella back again and we can just hash it out again. I mean, seriously, why does everything have to be a fight? Like, just do the right thing. Like, you're the one saying you can't have the dress done on time. You're the one choosing to close your seamstress shop. So give me my money back or give me my material. Very simple. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. Do you think I'm wrong? I don't know. No, I'm not in the business. I'm not rich. I'm not in the business of just throwing away $235. <sighs> so yeah, this coronavirus is just, it's just drama. It's just causing a lot of people, a lot of headaches. And, um, you know, I think one good thing about it though, you guys, is everybody's homeschooling now. <laughs> <laughs> How awesome is that? I mean, I'm seeing all over my Facebook, all over the Facebook groups that I'm in. Um, and it's like all of America is homeschooling now. So I really hope that um, out of this tragedy, one of the things we'll see is a lot of mamas and daddies that are saying, hmm, this homeschooling ain't so bad. Um, this is really awesome. I'm getting to spend like this time with my children that I didn't spend with them before or um, educating them at home really isn't that hard. And maybe they'll decide to homeschool them for good. That's what I'm hoping. Um, it's just precious. I have like some really good friends on Facebook and I'm seeing their Facebook posts like, oh, Riding our, bike, riding our bikes for a break from school or mama's pushing their babies on the swing set in their backyard and just kind of loving this quality time that they're getting with their kids that normally they don't have um, because either they usually are working all day or they're at home but their kids are in school all day. So you guys, that's that's my world every day. And it homeschooling, uh, it has changed me and my perspective on mothering. It really has. It's helped me to know Parker in a way that I don't know if I would have known him like that if he was still going to school full time. I mean, think of how many hours they're in school, right? Um, so it just, it allows me to know my son in a way that I, I didn't before. And also to be like, integrated into his education like before he would come home and, and I would help him with his homework or maybe just hear at dinner a little bit about what he learned for Eng uh, you know English phonics whatever um, but I I wasn't really like a part of it and now 
I'm a part of it so much. Like I'm his teacher. So it's like everywhere we go, you know, it's like, um, oh, he'll point out things that he can read now. Or I'm like, oh, Parker, and we're doing math in the grocery store. And it's true. That's what we do. So anyway, I think it's amazing, you guys, bringing the babies home and, um, you know, giving these parents a chance to see, uh, one, that us homeschoolers, we're not, we're not weirdos. I mean, in fact, this, I feel just as much isolated right now as, um, as everybody else does, even though I'm a homeschooler normally, because even as a homeschooler, we do socialize, you know, we have all kinds of stuff. We have field trips we go on, we have play dates, we have playground dates, we have our classical conversations, homeschool community that we're a part of. And every Monday, we're together with our friends. And we um, just we're constantly meeting up church gatherings and things like that. So Right now, we don't have that. Everything's been canceled because of this virus. So even as a homeschooling mom who's home with Parker every day, I'm also feeling isolated because we're not, we don't have those extracurriculars that we normally do with our homeschool friends. So, um, but anyway, that is my hope is that you mamas out there that are all of a sudden homeschoolers and this has been thrown into your lap is that maybe you'll decide to do it forever because it's such a, such a special, special bond that you can have with your babies and, you know, take it one day at a time. And, um, I would recommend a book to you. It is called the unhurried homeschooler and it's written by Dorinda Wilson. She's a homeschooling mom. She's, I think she has eight children. She's been homeschooling for like something like over 30 years. And she wrote that book and she also has an amazing podcast. Um, it's just the Dorinda Wilson podcast and it's one of my favorites. And I read that book. It is, she says it's mercifully short and it is mercifully short. I don't read a lot of books like from cover to cover. I always get started and I never finish, but, um, I read her book because it was short and it was easy for me to do, but it gave me a perspective on homeschooling. And I'm so glad that I read that right when I started homeschooling Parker for first grade, um, because it just made me realize like, it's not all about the curriculum. It's not all about the lessons and getting it in and getting this done and finishing this whole worksheet and doing that. It's like, sometimes you just got to take a break and go outside and let him jump on the trampoline and take a nature walk and cuddle with them on the couch and read them stories. Like they learn best like that, you guys. So if you're a mom that, that or a dad that this has just been thrown into your lap, I would really just encourage you just to soak it up and love on your babies as much as you can. It's, it's something that you'll never forget. And I promise you, they won't forget it either. So anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. I think Joe is out front staining our front porch posts and I'm supposed to be out there helping. And I told him I was going to come in here and change. And then I was like, oh, let me just check in with my homies. So that's just a little, I guess, coronavirus update. You know, it's it's definitely affected um, our adoption with Jackson. Drama with Lexi's prom dress. Hopefully they don't cancel prom. Of course, if it's the right thing to do, if this thing isn't settled down by then, I would understand that. But it's just sad. You know, she's not going to get this chance again. Um so yeah, but that's it, you guys. I just wanted to say, hey, I hope you guys are all safe out there and um, doing okay. And for the Watson family, we're we're hanging in there and we're doing good. Good. <laughs> this is a live recording. I don't have my my camera. It's, I'm doing this on my phone, so I can't edit that out. So um, this is, uh, yeah, that's just what it is. So anyways, love you guys. And for those of you that are new and have subscribed recently, I love it. I love seeing the, the new subscribers. It's really cool. And I've just gotten some really sweet comments, um, very kind comments, and it's very encouraging and keeps me going. So I look forward to it. All right, you guys, until next time, take care and wash your hands. See ya.